Hey guys, Elementrix here. Hope you're all doing well and welcome back to the channel and to episode 2 of Valorant Basics, a video series where we go over everything you need to know in order to elevate your game to the next level. For episode 2, we'll be taking a look at warm-up routines and simple tips that will help you improve your aim. To give you a better overview, here is the breakdown of this video and you can find the timestamps down below. We'll be starting off by looking at your EDPI, then we'll be taking a look at some aim techniques which you should definitely know when playing a competitive shooter such as Valorant. And lastly, we'll be going into some warm-up practice. Starting off with your EDPI or true sensitivity. It is your DPI multiplied by your in-game sensitivity and an example of this would be if player A has a DPI of 1600 and an in-game sense of 2 and player B has a DPI of 400 and an in-game sense of 8. The EDPI of player A would be 3200 and the EDPI of player B would also be 3200. Both players have the same EDPI though their DPI and in-game sense are very different. My advice is that you learn to play with a lower EDPI, especially if you're coming from a game like Call of Duty for example, where learning to play on a higher sense is usually more advantageous. However, in a game like Valorant, you will need to be accurate in order to take down your target faster. And if you have a higher EDPI, then in most cases you will struggle as making micro adjustments are much harder. This means you will need to make sure that you have enough space on your desk as it will require you to make larger movements in order for you to hit your flick shots. A good rule of thumb is being able to do a 180 degree turn with one swipe of the mouse. I noticed my aim improved greatly when I lowered my sense and made more space on my desk for a larger mouse pad. Let's take a look at your DPI and where you can change it. Simply open up the software that comes with your mouse and find the section that allows you to change your DPI. A good starting point would be to set it to 400, 800 or 1600. These are the most common values used by most people, especially the pro players. Speaking of pro players, here is an example of some of the pros and their eDPI. You notice that not all of them have a low true sensitivity, however they have been playing games at a high level for many years and have been able to develop the proper techniques that are needed to play with a higher sense. Once you understand the fundamentals of having a good aim, you can start to increase it slightly to see if your aim improves even more. Let's say you select a DPI of 800. You will then want to hop into the practice range and run a few tests to see what your in-game sensitivity should be. The first is to make sure you can do a 180 degree turn with one swipe of the mouse. The second is set up the bots on medium and play one round. Increase your sense slightly if you're undershooting and decrease it if you're overshooting. It is okay if you're not spot on every time and a good way to notice if your sensitivity is just right is if you manage to make micro adjustments and land the next shot. However, once again, if your adjustments are not accurate, you will need to lower or increase depending on if you're over or under shooting. Once you think you found your right sensitivity, don't change it. One of the biggest mistakes is when people keep changing their sense several times in a short period. You aren't allowing yourself to get used to something that takes several days before you start noticing the benefits. So leave it for a few days and then make minor adjustments where necessary. One of the biggest complaints from players that recently started playing a competitive shooter such as Valorant is why don't my bullets land where I'm aiming or why do my bullets separate from my crosshair? The answer to this is simple and it is because every weapon has a movement penalty, meaning unless you are completely standing still, you will not be accurate. Here is an example of when you are moving versus when you move, stand still and shoot. We will take a look at a version of this technique shortly. In addition to this, every weapon has a random spray after the fourth bullet or so. This of course depends on the gun, but you should try and take down your enemy within the first four initial bullets. If you don't, then stop spraying and start bursting. This is the first technique we'll take a look at and it essentially allows you to control where the bullets go and in turn allowing you to kill your enemies faster. Here is an example of what bursting looks like and notice how my bullets are accurate over if I were to hold down the mouse and hope for the best. Keep in mind that it depends on the situation you're in of course and usually if you're further away from your target then you should tap fire. If your target is at medium range then you should try and burst and if your target is very close then spraying might be the best option. Now coming back to what I briefly touched upon previously and this is called the counter strafing technique. A quick tip if you're completely new to Valorant is to enable movement error in the crosshair settings either for the inner or outer line. This will show you if you're standing still, meaning completely accurate. Counter strafing is one of the most common techniques used by high level players and it allows you to in many cases get the advantage over a player that is standing still. You simply move in one direction and press the opposite direction when you're about to shoot. There is a moment when you're completely standing still, allowing you to be accurate. Now you can master counter strafing and deciding on when you should tap, burst or spray. But if you have poor crosshair placement then don't expect these techniques to help you very much. Crosshair placement is often the reason why your enemy beats you in a gunfight. Every second counts and if you're busy adjusting your crosshair mid-fight, 
then you will lose vital time which will more often than not result in your death. So ask yourself this, where is the enemy's head most likely going to appear? And that is where you need to hold your crosshair steady. Moving on to the warm up. If you're jumping into an unrated or ranked game without proper warm up, then don't complain when you're on receiving end of all those nasty one taps. Anyone that has played a competitive shooter for a considerable amount of hours will tell you that a good warm up is key before jumping into any game. If you're more serious about improving your aim and would like to track the progress, then I suggest you try it Aim Lab. It is free to play on Steam and running through some exercises for 15 minutes a day will greatly contribute to you improving your aim over time. Let's jump into the practice range in game and set up the bots on easy to begin with. Try and focus on hitting headshots only by tapping and not spraying. Once you feel comfortable, change it to medium and repeat until you get to hard. Keep in mind that you probably won't be very consistent on the highest level, but the goal here is to warm up your flick shots and to try and challenge yourself in getting a higher score every time. But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and found the content useful. If you did, you already know what to do. And if you're new to the channel and you really enjoy this kind of content, then why not consider subscribing. So take care, stay safe, and I'll talk to you guys later.